Hello everybody and welcome to our second game of the semi-finals. We have, have here on the south side of Crossroads playing as the Soviets. It is going to be Skoov. And from the north side, the Spanish destroyer, the most successful, uh, numerically speaking, tournament player in Company of Heroes history. Jezulin's been there, done it, won everything, got the t-shirt and has a stacked trophy cabinet. Featuring no actual trophies, just lots of uh, spaces on my tournament spreadsheet. Very good player, Dan. And um, what did we the see? Occasional in the first uh, mini game? Spanish flag used to, uh, you know, pin down things in his tapas trays. So <laughs> I love tapas. Um, well, that, that first game. I mean, everybody on YouTube's probably seen it. Everybody on Twitch has probably seen it. I suppose we could just cast this game. I guess we always do a recap, but. Uh, I guess, very quickly, Jezulin just won strategically by concentrating on victory points and building a completely different build order. That became increasingly relevant as the game went on, mm. and uh, it was a classic play. What do you think Stu will do differently this game? Um, it's t you know, Stu nearly had that just by the fact that he was playing better technically. I think he created a lot more opportunities. Um, this time he's wielding a faction that is going to have more variety. So I actually think he might win as Soviets against Jeslin here. Mm. Um, just on the fact that he played, uh, he, he was better at pushing at right moments. You know, he was he was better mm. at kiting in and out. He had Jes Jeslin in some pretty bad situations from the start. Um, but I like this decision, Amy. I like yeah, this decision of the sniper early on. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a lot of players are going this at the moment. Um, a lot of players are getting better at playing with snipers, which I much prefer than complaining to the balancers and asking them to be nerfed. It's a much better decision to get good with the unit. That's my opinion as a Co-1 vet kind of guy. That's a little bit biased. Um, also, I must point out strategically, Jezlin has loaded in with the leftmost commander being Lightning War Doctrine, and then he's got Mobile Defense and uh, mechanized assault. Somebody in chat said there's no mobile defense. They lied. Well, they clearly mistook that. My bad. I got so excited, Dan, for a moment, for a fleeting moment, I thought I'd mistook the commander portrait for being something else. How, how can the guy you in chat was wrong? He's, he's the only one that they, they built a helmet that you can see his glaring eyes. Uh, you know, through. <laughs> he's the only one that stares back at you like, I am confident. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you know, it's... Uh, no mobile oh, defense yes. is, is definitely you... there. You'd be silly, I think, you know, given how popular it is to load in without it, because oh, at the very least, it makes your opponent it. expect that you're going to play it. Um, can't we just have actually... Captain, Li Captain Lightning War back for one game? You know, can't I, you just Lightning... come back? We hate him, didn't we? Captain Lightning War with his eye patch. No, like... no I've always loved it. Always. Yeah, me too. But I think Chat got bored of it once or something. It used to be chosen every game, didn't it? Yeah. Um, but I just want those G43s and those Stukas blaring and. The pirate shanties of yesterday. I'm interested about the start of this game in terms of map control. Um, now, one of the things we have to point out, Stuve made a decision here. He's going to try and break down Jeslin's manpower with the sniper. That means he really had to... Um, uh, he really had to pick a direction on the map. He didn't go for the right-hand side of the map. He went for the left aggressively. Um, he's being decapped, and he doesn't have uh, enough strength in capping units to to recover anything. So Stuve, um, maybe putting himself on the back foot, big time. Stop. Penal battalion on retreat. I tell you what, these SVT rifles are hella accurate, and this grenadier might even go down. You may have thought a three-man squad would be fine, but this ain't a conscript. This is a penal. As soon as you hit that negative cover, which Stuve has managed to get himself in position to fire across. <gasps> nice rescue by the MG42. Um, Good movement hmm. there. Good movement. Yeah. From both players, actually. I think uh, Jensen was right to be aggressive and Stu was right to counterattack in the way he did. So it's a great start to game two. And uh, I think both players are very equal at the moment in terms of skill level. Um, from different angles. I mean, Stu's played 250 hours in the past two weeks and Jensen's played like 8,000 hours in the past six years. So. Uh, I think yeah, there's something... Very, it's gone. I think Sorry. there's something actually in what you're saying about Stuve practicing so much. You remember there was a time when like 
I used to play Company of Heroes loads and loads. Um, no. and like you know, Hans used to uh, you know Hans used to do that loads. What what happens when you play so often and so regularly is that you don't think about the game strategically as much. You you do things by reflex, and mm. uh, it's actually a serious problem when it comes to things like build orders. I remember not playing the game for two weeks, coming back and being like much better <laughs> because of that. You're so right, dude. That is uh. Um, an excellent point, and one I completely agree with, and it's a pattern I've noticed entirely. Um, DevM is the perfect example, and people get sick of hearing about DevM. Well, he kind of 11 0 the first tournament and made it a bit of a joke. That's unfortunate, but it's what happened. Um, he literally takes advantage of that concept. He does not spam hours, he spams quality. So he'll come back, he'll analyze what the other players are doing, he'll literally pick apart the maps. He's not a naturally gifted player at all. That kind of idea that uh, sports people or competitive gamers are naturally gifted is absolute bullshit. People literally analyze and get better intelligently. It's why Kimbo's a good player, even though he's a troll. It's why DevM is probably the best player still to this day. They come back, they take advantage, and they just think about things in incredible detail. Let's talk about the tactics involved there. Jezun's going in with this scout car. Absolutely. He wants to throw the scout car to try and get that sniper. Uh, it's a little bit risky, actually. I think the way that the tier uh, tier three is being built here, actually, the sniper would always win in a kind of dosy do with the scout car. No PTRS upgrades on the penal battalion, so not too much in way of in uh, in risk here, other than light arms fire. It's, uh, yeah, you know, this is where this is where I think Stuve made a mistake um, because he mm. had the sniper but he played it aggressively and he played on a side of the map where resources were cut off way too quickly yeah and he's the, because he's had his resources cut off he doesn't have enough uh, munitions for ptrs anymore and the ptrs is usually what in this build allows you to play with the sniper is you get one of the penals with the ptrs um, but he's gone for the 60 munitions on the flamer engineer and i think that was a mistake in the build order here um, He's finally been able to get the PTRS up now, by the way. It was upgrading, my bad, but uh, still, a little bit late. The other mistakes that I think, uh, if you look at the building time, you know, why build tier 3 now when you don't have the fuel to build anything from it? That is a waste of manpower. He has guards, you know, he didn't need to put the PTRS on the penal battalions. He could have brought guards out. Um, yeah. It, it, that to me is, uh, again, he's just losing on build orders. He's losing on uh, decision making. Yeah. There's multiple ways he could have played this. I mean, he could have gone two penals into the guard. He could have gotten, uh, you know, PTRS on one penal sooner. But uh, the way he played it certainly wasn't uh, a very efficient way or one that's worked. So that's as much as we do now. I mean, it's people competing in chat to say what he should have done differently. But uh, certainly whatever he has done hasn't worked, um, which is unfortunate. I mean, just to go back to an earlier point, I will clarify, by the way, of course some people are naturally gifted in some ways. It's just I genuinely think in this game, um, I think quality matters over quantity, and especially in tournament play, but I just thought I'd re-clarify. But uh, yeah, this game's... Is it over? Uh, no, it's never It's never over, is it, really? Uh, it's always uh, always a chance of getting back in. It's one of those games where... I mean, RNG plays so much in Company of Heroes, and anything could, could go wrong. But uh, you have to play carefully, and the one thing is that I don't see Stuve playing the correct decisions to get back. Jeslin did in the previous game, Stuve mm. isn't. Sniper backpedaling, Grenadier again taking off the cut. This map is often seen as a munitions rich map, um, but if you get that cut off, you obviously cut them off at the stem. Um, sniper's gotten 15 kills, but does it matter? You know, shades of the Ultimate Team Tournament and Love Nest and Momo when uh, they had millions of sniper kills but no map control. I mean, I guess it would matter if Stu <gasps> can pull it back, it will matter. Very delicate dance there, Dan. I mean, the sniper was risky going down the PTRS penal, save the day, but. Oh, guards are out now as well, so there, there we go. The 2 2 2 should get pushed out. I think Stu may have survived long enough now. We're, we're finally out of the age of the scout car. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, Age of Empires when you upgrade to civilization or something. We finally left that period of time. 
That was a long, <laughs> a long scout yes. card dominance. He, we but, see Jezulin with his shining cathedrals and his uh, telescopes and his tanks <laughs> and Apaches. And here's Stuve with his worker units and gatherers. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> very, uh, <laughs> it's very a uh, rise of nations for a while. But yeah. actually, the one thing that, um, that Stuve's done, I think he's fallen into that classic trap of uh, building too many infantry, too many call-ins. Like, you know, he's, he's had to just bring things in quickly and immediately because of that pressure and uh, now he's going to be the back foot uh, on the back foot for teching imagine if age of empires 4 is literally just coming near heroes but with that kind of thing i'd so play that <laughs> it could be we don't know yet penal's pushed away gren's getting in the house lmgs by the way it's just an excellent way to punish somebody that you're beating you, they're on the move you're static you're waiting for them to come to you and uh, when they do you just shoot them down like the Dirty Soviet dogs they are. Je Jeslin actually popped three LMGs on his Grens at the same time. Um, nice that he's actually getting the p terraces to waste uh, ah. Satchel there. Global yeah. infantry upgrades, just like Co-1. The Browning automatics from the racks. Those were the days. 60 fuel, and you earned them. And everything popped out at once. That's Jeslin's clearly trying to make me happy. What a great guy. I think uh, you know, those kind of pops are still important. They're just harder to, the harder to do. Is oh, that grenadier has no idea how lucky it was not to walk into that mine with two models. <laughs> it might just be that one model picks off. T seventy, let's get attacking the two two two, pushing it away. Is that incendiary round? No, it's not quite yet. I don't want to pop that. But there's a Faust waiting behind the burnt out remnants of trap. the central building. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> but a trap that I don't think Jeslin can afford to pull off as he doesn't have the munitions for a Faust. And uh Here we go. Oh, who was that? Who would have thought it? This is incredible by Jeslin. I've not seen this for a long time. He's decided to bring on a Puma. Now this vehicle, for those that don't know, is an a mobile armored car with a heavy cannon capable of taking out vehicles, in this case the T-70. The Puma was an inspired choice by the Spaniard, Dan. What do you think about that? It's just the right call to make, do you know what I mean? Um, I, I, I mean, you know, everybody maybe doesn't want to see mobile defense, whatever. Uh, that was needed. That was absolutely needed. Was it panic in this case, I guess? But the chat is saying panic, ironically. It's more just there we go. Yeah. These are out the in the semi-finals. Well, well. There we have it. That's the... Uh... First of the semi-finals over. Well played to Jeslin. I think he looks better every single qualifier, if I'm honest. Yeah. Well, um, I think it's a good opportunity to have a very quick look at the brackets and um, and just show his progress. Because I think you'll find, if you go to brackets, by the way, and then the top right it says completed brackets. Mm -hmm. uh, you may want to keep, uh, may want to like uh, open that in a new tab and then keep the current one on the <sighs> other screen. If I've just, uh... it's, it's all right. You can always go back and go standings and then brackets. It's fine. Uh, but if you go to the very first, which is qualification tournament one, the little Barbarossa, uh, the, you'll see that I believe he got into the second round. And then it gets better from there. I think he was knocked out to Sedolio initially. Let's have a look at Citadel. Where was he in this one? You should put your cursor on him. Oh no, sorry, oh, no, I'm on delay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Got him. laughs> oh yeah, then he lost. Then he lost to Von Ivan. So we could have seen that rematch this time, actually, if Von Ivan had beaten Steve. But uh, now he's got, he got the, to the, of, the, the one bypass. round further. That's an interesting triangle, isn't it? So Von Ivan beats Jeslin, Jeslin beats Steve, and Steve beats Von Ivan. Hmm. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's almost as though we need like a best of seven to truly decide which is the better player. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I've still. I, I love the four elimination like quad uh, qualification tournament format because over the course of things you should see the best players emerge theoretically. But when you see a triangle of like the Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle effect, it is a little bit.